77, 17. We're now in 19, and it's still going on. That is a modern day myth, people. So if you just want to dismiss it, that's fine. You go ahead and dismiss it. But you're the person that probably thought this movie was good. You probably sat down, you ate your popcorn, you don't really care about the saga, you're a casual fan, so you probably liked the movie. Because I can see that aspect of it. Because from that aspect of it, I enjoyed the movie as well. But unfortunately for me, I have to care about this damn thing way too much. I want every chapter in the episodes to connect because I'm watching a saga that starts from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 to 7 to 8 to 9. Maybe you don't care about that, but I do. This Disney purchase of Star Wars has completely ruined it. They ruined the very thing they purchased. Blading for Truth, Star Wars, Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker Review. Whew. Okay. Went to see the movie today, and here it is in a nutshell. People are reporting that it was awful. People are reporting that it was good. I myself was very confused by this since for the past three days, whenever it premiered. And a lot of other people were confused as well. How could it be so split down the middle? I'm going to tell you how. And when I say what I'm going to say, just keep listening for about 10 seconds because then I'm going to explain myself. Was it a good movie? What does that mean? It was two and a half hours long in a theater. Was it good? Yes. Was it a good way to end a nine part saga? No, it was terrible. This is the problem with the rise of Skywalker. This is why everyone is so down the middle. This is why reviews aren't matching up with fans. Was it a good movie? On the surface, yes. If you are a Star Wars fan, you hated this movie. If you aren't a Star Wars fan, or a casual fan, or someone that just likes to go to the movies, you probably liked this movie. I am a hardcore Star Wars fan. I have been all my life. There were things in this movie that I cannot, I can't, there were choices in this movie that will forever be a roadblock in my mind as a Star Wars fan. There were inexcusable moments in this movie that completely and utterly obliterate and detonate a nuclear bomb on the first six movies of this franchise. Four, five, and six were made in the 70s and 80s. Then the prequels came. Those six movies were completely shit on and now flushed down the toilet. That is what the Star Wars fandom was based on Disney came in purchased this thing for four billion dollars and made decision after decision that destroyed destroyed the original six episodes and silly me of course I can see clearly and hear clearly as I watch a trailer that I know what to expect. If you look back on this channel, you will see me making a dick out of J.J. Abrams by impersonating <laughs> Emperor Palpatine for about 15 minutes. I did that. I did that. 
And still, I went to this movie with hope that J.J. Abrams would prove me wrong. The redemption arc of Anakin Skywalker, who became Darth Vader, who became Anakin Skywalker again, because of the love and the hope of his son, has been completely destroyed by bringing back the by bringing back the reason that his redemption happened and oh by the way what was the reason there wasn't one how did emperor palpatine survive when darth vader threw him down that shaft how did he survive I saw the movie, and I don't know. Is that because I wasn't paying attention for two and a half hours? No. Do you know why that is? Because J.J. Abrams doesn't know. Because it wasn't in the movie. So if you bring back Emperor Palpatine and somebody else kills him, what Anakin Skywalker, Darth Vader, and Luke Skywalker did to Emperor Palpatine doesn't matter. This is why Rise of Skywalker was a bad movie. I cannot believe. I can't believe I sat there for two and a half hours still expecting a reason that would make sense and it wouldn't have been too difficult to do. As a matter of fact, at the end of the movie, there is a classic opportunity that could have been used. It could have been used. The Emperor has his hands out and he has Ben Solo and Rey on their knees in front of him, powerless. And I thought, uh, still in that theater, I'm watching this and I'm thinking, here comes Anakin. Here comes Anakin. JJ can make this decision right just by having Anakin come out right now and just do what he did 30 years ago, which is destroy the Emperor. But this time, you do it for good. I don't know why he came back. I don't know how he came back. We weren't told that information. But we are in this position together, people. And we are sitting in the theater. And the only hope, the only hope we have for the redemption arc to not be erased is to have J.J. simply redo it like he remade New Hope in Episode 7. Like he, in parts, remade Return of the Jedi with Episode 9. You might as well keep going. Let's just redo it. Here comes Anakin. Oh my God, it's Hayden Christensen. It's a force ghost and he somehow got... No. No. Didn't happen. Ray got the kill. Ray got the kill. Ray Palpatine got the kill. That's right. Ray is the granddaughter of Emperor Palpatine. So now, for anyone that may have children that will one day have grandchildren when they pull up this much talked about Star Wars saga on Disney Plus and maybe they just want to they don't want to overcomplicate it they're going to binge watch episode 1 through episode 9 by the time they get to episode 9 the Skywalkers don't really matter the Palpatines matter. That's what J.J. Abrams decided to do with the closing of the Skywalker saga. Star Wars is officially dead. I cannot believe this was the decision. This is what they thought would be best for this franchise. 
Now, if you've seen this movie and you disagree, oh, you're being too hard on it. Oh, come on, it's just a movie. It's not just a movie. This is a myth. This is a modern day myth that has lived since 1977 in our pop culture. 77, 87, 97, 07, 17. We are now in 19 and it's still going on. That is a modern day myth, people. So if you just want to dismiss it, that's fine. You go ahead and dismiss it. But you're the person that probably thought this movie was good. Because I understand it from the standpoint of walking into a theater with a popcorn and a cherry Coke. That's my go-to. Every theater. Every movie. Popcorn, cherry Coke. Yes, butter. Of course. It's my go-to. I had it again. You probably sat down. You ate your popcorn. You don't really care about the saga. You're a casual fan. So you probably like the movie. Because I can see that aspect of it. Because from that aspect of it, I enjoyed the movie as well. But unfortunately for me, I have to care about this damn thing way too much. I want every chapter in the episodes to connect because I'm watching a saga that starts from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 to 7 to 8 to 9. Maybe you don't care about that, but I do. See, when I watch television shows and it starts at episode 1, and it ends at episode 200, I want that all to connect. Like The Shield. Like Sons of Anarchy. But these people that are running Disney, they don't even know who's writing the three movies. They don't even know who's writing the movie 7, and then who's writing the movie 8, and then who's writing the movie 9. They don't know that. So how can a writer have an ending in mind when he starts this Disney purchase of Star Wars has completely ruined it. They ruined the very thing they purchased. I'm sorry. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. I am not going to sit here and defend J.J. Abrams. I'm not going to sit here and defend Ryan Johnson. J.J. Abrams signed on for one movie. He made a movie and was out. Is that J.J. Abrams' fault? Ryan Johnson was hired. He made a movie. And he was out. Is that his fault? Colin Trevorrow was hired to make a movie. And he took the job, but was fired. And then J.J. was brought back. Is that Colin Trevorrow's fault? Is that J.J. Abrams' fault? No, it's Lucasfilm's fault. It's Kathleen Kennedy's fault because she's the president who makes the decisions on who makes the movies. I will never, I will never get sucked into anything from Lucasfilm again. How? How can you justify destroying a very simple, very simple character arc by bringing back the big baddie that created that character arc for a certain character that made a franchise that has been alive for 50 years. You destroy that by bringing the character back with no explanation. I am not joking. If you haven't seen this movie, you will not get an explanation as to why Palpatine is back. There wasn't an explanation. Even people I know, I'm discussing this movie with them. And they're saying, well, I like this and I like this and I like this and I like this, so I guess it was a good movie. Well, you're missing something. Well, it just means that Anakin wasn't the chosen one. Ray was. <laughs> oh, is that all it means? What that means to me is everything that the saga was built on, the first six movies, have been shit on in one fell swoop. That's what it means. This was a pathetic, pathetic, pathetic display of storytelling. I am not a filmmaker. I am not a writer. I am just a fan that consumes stuff. I like things to interconnect. I like epic storytelling. I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. Okay, I'm a huge Tolkien fan. 
Got all the books sitting behind me. All of them. Even the stuff you never heard of. I got it back there. Read it all. I can't get this. I, I, I just don't understand this. I don't know how anybody can come out of that theater saying this was a satisfying ending to the Skywalker saga. If you were satisfied with this, I don't know what to tell you. There's one thing sticking in my way, and it is to bring back Palpatine. Now, what could they have done? Unfortunately, the big bad baddie that they built up in the first movie was killed in the second movie. Now, why was that? Because two different dudes wrote two different stories, and Disney thought that was a cool idea. Okay, so we have a third movie. We don't have a big bad baddie. We got to bring back Emperor Palpatine. Mr. Abrams, you did not have to do that. You know what you should have done? Who was the big bad baddie's apprentice in episode seven? Kylo Ren. Who killed the big bad baddie in episode eight? Kylo Ren. Who then becomes the new big bad baddie? Kylo Ren. Who should have been the big bad baddie in your movie to close this trilogy? Kylo fucking Ren, you moron. However you want to go from there, you go from there. You want to redeem him? Redeem him. You want to kill him? Kill him. Guess what? You did both in this movie anyway. You redeemed him and then you killed him. So why was Palpatine brought back? Why? I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer. I guess they just brought him back to give Rey a, a backstory that she's Emperor Palpatine's granddaughter. Woohoo. Congratulations, you moron. It makes no sense. It makes no sense whatsoever. As a matter of fact, let's break this down a little bit. And I'm not going to go blow for blow. I refuse to do that because I'll tell you what. Going blow for blow in this movie is basically impossible. It's basically impossible because the all right, the first act of this movie, I guess you could say, first half hour, 45 minutes, I had no idea what was going on because they had no idea what was going on. It was so fast. It was shot, 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 shot. They were doing something. The trio, the new trio, they were doing something. None of it mattered in the end. It really didn't. And I, I can't even go blow for blow because when they show you a scene, you have no time to process it. Because the second scene happens and you're trying to process that. And then the third scene happens. And I'm telling you, these are like high-flying action scenes that are going on. And you're like, wait a minute, what was in the first scene again? Did they blow that already? Um, what happened? And when you're having that thought, it's the fifth scene. And it doesn't stop. It's like literally he shook up a... He shook up, he wrote words on paper, right? Ripped them apart, word for word, put them all in a hat, shook it up really fast, and just threw it, and wherever it landed, it landed. I mean, I mean, I'm watching this, and there's, forget about continuity. Forget about continuity from eight. And part of this movie, a lot of it was he was trying to uh, correct the stupidity that we all hated from The Last Jedi, from Ryan Johnson's movie, from the last movie. And I'll, I'll say this to J.J. Abrams. Great job on Luke Skywalker and fixing that hole. I don't care about my lightsaber and I don't care about the Jedi. Thank you, J.J. Abrams, for that. But if you are going to have a rap battle, a pissing contest, um, a diss track, basically he wrote a couple diss tracks on this album. He dissed fellow rapper Ryan Johnson a couple times with specific scenes. When you do that, it brings the movie down. I appreciate it. I appreciate the wink and the nod because J.J. Abrams is writing in there 
something for the fans, okay? Things that we didn't like in the last movie that we felt killed the movie. But when you do that, it brings the final movie down and it brings the saga down as a whole because it looks like real life is interfering with your story, which it was, okay? So that's that. That takes care of that. There were a couple moments in there, I think two or three. But other than that, the final act was, it was... It was Kylo and it was Rey, and oh my God, Rey is so powerful. She is so powerful. You, I'm telling you, when you watch, I haven't done this yet, but if I ever do go back and watch one through nine, I'll definitely go back and watch one through six again because that's the trilogy. That's Star Wars. That's official. But if I ever do go back from one through nine, once I get to, <laughs> you're you're going to see people getting hurt. You're going to see people getting di- dying, and you're going to think to yourself, well. What about the Jedi texts? What about the temple? Shouldn't they know how to force heal? Why is Vader so angry that Padme died? Why doesn't he just force heal her? Why is Obi-Wan so upset that Qui-Gon died? Why doesn't he just force heal her? Thanks, JJ. Keep on flushing that toilet. Oh my God. Listen, if, and again, if you're a Star Wars fan, if you're a fan of fiction, If you're a fan of world building, you have to have rules. You have to have rules. There are sets of rules that you just can't violate. And a lot of them were violated in this movie. The last movie of a saga, you're going to break all the rules. You don't realize what you're doing to the saga. There are clear rules established about the force. There are clear rules established about people that can manipulate the force. They're not gods. <laughs> Ray is a god. Oh, there were just there was just so much. There was just so much I can't even remember right now. But my main thing, and I'm I'm gonna end this here pretty quickly. Uh I mean there's a lot of people you could go watch. If you want five hour live streams, go check out Overlord DVD, Doomcock. I love that channel. You can check out Gary at Nerd Rotic. I love his channel. Um, check out Geeks and Gamers. Check out all those people. Uh, really good stuff. Really hardcore fans. And they tell it like it is. They don't bullshit. But if you want blow by blow, scene by scene breakdown, all those guys are all over it. So go check them out. But and I'm not saying that to whatever. It's just I'm a fan. I, I watch a bunch of channels too. And those are my go-tos for, you know, stuff like this, but dear Lord, I don't know how you can be a fan of Star Wars and just ignore Palpatine, especially without a reason. I mentioned this last week at some point, you know, if they reboot Harry Potter in 20 years and bring back Voldemort and it's, and kill Harry, You know, you're all excited to see Harry again as an adult and he's going to take on Voldemort again or whatever, or the new bad guy, whatever, and they kill him, you're going to be pissed. You're going to be pissed. And speaking of that, J.J. Abrams, the least you could have done. The main story for Harry Potter is, and I'm not a huge Potter fan, but I know it. I know it because everybody else that I know is a huge Potter fan. I know the story. The big bad guy died in the past. And then he came back and little Harry Potter had to defeat him. Well, that sounds a lot like the emperor. Why are you so mad at the emperor? Well, because they gave a reason in Harry Potter, that whole Horcrux stuff, whatever Voldemort's soul or life force or whatever was split into objects, you know, and they had the, the objects were collected and that gave him his power back. That was a reason. JJ, you could have Horcruxed this shit. It would have been a direct ripoff, but at least it would have been an answer to how Palpatine came back. We don't know, and we will never know. I, th- I think the only thing that was said, so I don't know if he was talking to Kylo Ren or Rey, he was having a conversation with somebody, and he said, I've already died once. That's That was the extent of it. I'm not joking. I've already died once. I'll die again or something like that. And I thought to myself, okay, is this going to go into an explanation as to how he survived? No, no, no. 
And yes, I am honing in on this fact because that's where it starts and ends for me. The movie started pretty much with Palpatine. I don't, I can't remember if it was the very first scene. I think that was the good guys, but I think it was it within the first five minutes. They, you know, they introduced Palpatine. I mean, you you just can't do that. And again, you know, George Lucas caught a lot of shit for those three prequels. He really did. You know, uh, George R. Abrams, that little Jake kid that played Anakin in the first one, and then Hayden Christensen. Nobody liked Hayden Christensen in the second one. He was overacting, and he sucked as an actor. And then the third one, he wasn't mean enough. Dude, yeah, go back and watch them. Go back and watch those movies. Because I think he was directed to act like that in two. So when he acted the way he acted in three, it made sense. Because the next step was to become Darth Vader. If you go watch back those three prequels, especially with the politics going on. Not modern day politics. The politics within the story. The framework of the Senate and the Chancellor. And what he was doing. How he overthrew the government to build his empire. There's a lot in those movies. There's a lot of continuity in those movies. And I think we all owe George Lucas an apology for those three movies. The way we all acted. Because I'll tell you what. One is connected to two, is connected to three. Is connected to four, is connected to five, is connected to six. And that's where it ends. I'm telling you. It's terrible. From the standpoint of rules, from the standpoint of what came before, it was a terrible, 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 unforgivable decision to bring back Emperor Palpatine, especially without explanation. And even if they had an explanation for it, I don't know if I'd be okay with it. Just for the simple fact that it erases everything Anakin and Luke did. Luke was the key cog. At the last second, Vader turned, killed him, and returned as the Jedi, Anakin Skywalker. You bring back the guy that they killed to establish that, you're erasing it. You're erasing it. They didn't kill anyone. They didn't kill anyone. Unbelievable. Well, a 30 year old movie. Just, <laughs> just flush it down the toilet. And this was a good movie. This is this is good, right? This is good. Episode nine is good. I don't know what these people are talking about. They're too they're too hardcore. How can't they think this is a good movie? Uh, did you see the other movies? <laughs> I mean <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, that's all I got. That's all I got. Blading for Truth. Star Wars Rise of Skywalker Episode 9 is in the books. I am not happy moving forward for me. When I think back on Star Wars, it will be Episodes 1 through 6. It will be Anakin. It will be Padme. It will be Darth Vader. It will be Emperor Palpatine. It will be Luke and Ben and Han, and Leia. Everybody else, you disagree with me? That's your right. But you can have these three new movies. I'll keep the original six. How's that? How's that for a trade-off? You don't bother me, I won't bother you. Because evidently, when you watch your three new movies, <laughs> you won't be worried about Skywalkers anyway. Even though Ray took the name Skywalker, I don't know why she did, because her literal last name is Palpatine. It's hysterical. <laughs> it's hysterical. <laughs> Ray. Ray who? Ray Skywalker. No. <laughs> you you keep that movie. <laughs> you guys keep that movie. I'll keep the original six and we'll agree to uh part ways and 
and uh, that's it. That's it. So, review. In a nutshell, like I said in the beginning, if you're a casual Star Wars fan or a casual movie goer, you'll probably like this movie because from that aspect of it, yeah, it was good. If you're a Star Wars fan, you will and you should hate this movie because of what they decided to destroy. And I'm not even scratching the surface, really. Really, I'm not. Because boy, oh boy, the force healing, the things that Rey can do, she is she's absolutely the most powerful Jedi. Absolutely. And I use Jedi in air quotes because, I don't, you know, because <laughs> who cares? <laughs> Oh my goodness, I've never seen a piece of fiction be put into somebody's hands, two guys, and be bastardized to this extent. It's unbelievable. That's all I got. Enjoy, everybody, and I'll see you on the next one. Blade Egg for Truth.